The Miami Heat make a statement. The referees nearly make a huge, huge mistake in L.A. And is the league-wide scoring dip real or fake? Going to talk about it all right now on the Locked On NBA podcast. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, welcome back to the Locked On NBA podcast on a Wednesday. Thank you for making this show your first listen every day, Monday through Friday, free, wherever podcasts available, and on YouTube so you can see us in all of our glory. Uh, on Wednesdays, I'm John Corrales. I host the Locked On Celtics podcast. You can find me on Twitter at Reds Army underscore John. And I'm Jake Madison, host of the Locked On Pelicans podcast. You can find me on Twitter at Nola Jake. We'll get to that Lakers game in segment two. That that was very nearly just a monumental. Like, I'm I'm still shocked at how that that went with the refs. Uh, the third segment, real or fake? Something we're going to do on a regular basis. What was real? What was fake from the past week in the NBA or up to now in the NBA? But let us start right now with the very real Miami Heat, who won 125-110 in Dallas, and. Jake, I am a Heat believer. I believe that these guys, as we try to like figure out who we talk about real or fake, what what teams are struggling that might be, you know, might figure it out, what teams that are good might fall to fall a a little bit down to earth. Miami, I do not expect to fall down to earth. I think this is who they are. And I think they showed it again tonight in Dallas. Uh, They are for real. Yeah, they're really good. And when you and I were planning out the show, you you described them really well and you called them relentless because, man, they are aggressive on offense and they come right at you and in a variety of different ways trying to kind of get you on, on, on your back foot and then just kind of smack you and score. Like Jimmy Butler is an MVP candidate right now. He was 4 of 11, not a good shooting night, but he still finishes with 23 points because he gets the line 17 times because he's so aggressively attacking that defense. And then you've got Kyle Lowry, right, who for three quarters in this game is just kind of pulling the strings, running their offense, setting up everyone else. He finished with nine points on the night. And then in the fourth quarter, when, when the defense for Dallas, and look, they're not a great defense by any stretch, right? They're keyed in on everyone else. He goes, I'm going to take over. And now you've got to account for me all of a sudden. And he kind of dominated in the fourth quarter, I thought. They just hit you so many different ways. And you can really see why, you know, they they tampered and got Kyle Lowry early because it was, re- <laughs> it was really like kind of the missing piece for him. That is still technically under investigation, isn't it? Like, I haven't heard of <laughs> yeah, any think results so. there. Um, by the way, today's episode of Locked On NBA is brought to you by McDonald's, probably serving communities since 1965. McDonald's. Always more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. Big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. The Miami Heat fans loving their sixth straight win, all by double digits. Lowry, as you mentioned, season highs in points, assists, three-pointers, six of nine from three. Uh, Just an amazing performance there. A big performance from Tyler Hero. This is like, okay, so so Dallas, they got Luka. Luka was was putting people in foul trouble uh he alone but like basically dallas is is luca jalen brunson and let's just hope for the best uh by the way i don't know how jalen brunson isn't everybody's favorite player that dude he, is- he made it a game late in this one like he had a couple of plays that were just like hustle where it yeah. looked like maybe uh the maps could get back into this one yeah no jalen jalen brunson was was really good there at the end. Uh, Brunson finished with 25 points on 10 of 13 shooting. 10 of 13 is good shooting. And uh, when Jalen Brunson's getting seven rebounds, you, that, that's a problem for the other team. But uh, Miami just uh, – Tyler Hero was – he had a dominant stretch there in the second quarter where I think he scored 15 of his 25 points. And then you get like little things like Dwayne Dedman chipping in 10 points – and five rebounds like Deadman was good in Atlanta uh then he left and, and, and struggled and and now he's back in a role where he's playing just enough where he can you put him in there and you're like wow like why how is Dwayne Deadman making an impact but but there he is uh Bam Adebayo uh struggled with um 
he was off in this one and they, they still won handedly. <laughs> yeah. Still finished with 22 and 13, but this is, but this is what happens. Like this is why Miami, I think is so tough. You, 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 you have to account for so many different ways that they can beat you. Duncan Robinson didn't do much. Okay. Tyler hero is going to come at, come at you. Kyle Lowry, like you said, pull, you know, kind of running things and then he explodes and Jimmy Butler doesn't have to shoot very well, but next thing you know, He's got 23, six, uh, six, six, and three steals in a block. Their defense plays very much together. Uh, the Celtics play Miami in a couple of days, and the Celtics defense has just been terrible. And I watch Miami's defense, and I'm like, oh, that's what good defense looks like. Like the, the Miami Heat, they are, uh, what, number one in net rating uh, in the NBA right now uh, for a reason. That was uh, they, they put that on display. Uh, I, I just there's nothing I can't I can't say enough good about the Miami Heat, which is which is a problem for people who might be listening to me uh, on the Boston side. But it's the truth. Miami Miami is for real. And I think they're going to be at the top. You have the potential here, Jake, that if Brooklyn still kind of scuffles along and Milwaukee is just kind of up and down and they don't really care too much about the regular season, Miami could sneak in, get a two seed, maybe better. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't doubt that. You know, again, I, th I still think Milwaukee's the class of that conference. But, like, look, if Jimmy Butler keeps playing like this, you know, healthy, rested, like, it, th they're going to be in contention. They're just too talented. And also, again, you know, you talk about how their defense looks really good. They're clearly very small on offense. Coach Spo is one of the best coaches in the league and been there for so long, and there's a reason for it, and that's going to be a big part of their success, too. All right, let's jump to the next TNT game, which was the Phoenix Suns and the New Orleans Pelicans. Phoenix wins 112-100. Jake, you are the Pelicans guy. Uh, this one had to hurt. You guys, what, led by 20 and did not win this game. Look, no, no Zion Williamson still for New Orleans and we'll be without him for a little bit. No brain and Ingram playing in this one either. So it's just kind of one of those losses where from the Pelican side, I just kind of like shrug, right? Like, cool. They were forced in a ton of turnovers left and right for the first three quarters. Rookie Herb Jones, second round pick, by the way, really limited Devin Booker. He had an off shooting night, just seven of 20 from the field. Getting those turnovers, easy transition buckets, you're going to go and up, uh, win, you know. But then in the fourth quarter, Phoenix, really led by Chris Paul, just completely turned it around. Herb Jones left the game after taking an elbow to the face, and Phoenix got their offense going. They stopped turning the ball over, just one in the fourth quarter, and basically just couldn't miss a shot because the Pelicans didn't have anyone else who could play defense in this one. Chris Paul was masterful going for 12 points in the fourth. He was a perfect five of five. Whether it was orchestrating the pick and roll with JaVale McGee, who had seven points in the fourth quarter, and then when the team tried to kind of key in on him and take away the roll man, Chris Paul just pulled up, nailed shots. Like that was all she wrote. It was just a team with the better players ultimately winning in the end. And it's a 20 point loss for New Orleans. But what are they supposed to do without Zion Williamson or Brandon Ingram? And in this one, by the way, Chris Paul takes sole possession of third place all time in the career assist list. So he was incredible and just kind of sparked that comeback, led them to it. It's nothing we haven't seen before, though, from him, I think. Yeah, six assists in the fourth quarter. Wow. Um, every time I looked up, because I knew I knew you'd be very focused on this game, so I was focusing on other games. But every time I looked up, it was, oh, JaVale McGee! Like, oh, God, JaVale's <laughs> going off in this, in this fourth quarter. Uh, that, was, that was kind of fun to watch. Um, all right, and then let's wrap this up just by mentioning the Milwaukee Bucks, 117 to 89 winners. Uh, against the Detroit Pistons, the Milwaukee Bucks, and a three-game losing streak. Giannis, 28 points, nine assists, eight rebounds. Maybe the bigger story is that Cade Cunningham in his second NBA game uh, comes in two for 14, 0 of 9 from behind the arc. He's uh, 3 of 22 overall this season, and he's missed all 14 of his three-point attempts. A rocky start for Cade Cunningham, but it was never supposed to be all roses over there in Detroit, but uh, Milwaukee gets that win. All right, we're going to come back. Utah, Sacramento, Houston, and the Lakers, and just a mind-boggling officiating mistake. Uh, this episode of Locked On NBA is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities in 1965. Jake, do you have a, a favorite uh, McDonald's uh, meal that you go to? 
Uh, look, give me fries. Driving home from the arena at times late at night before I do a show and you just need to grab some food that's going to kind of fuel you for one of those late night podcasting sessions that we do. I stop by McDonald's very often and I'm happy every single time. You know, I, when I was younger, I would go for the McNuggets. McNuggets with barbecue sauce are clutch. Uh, nowadays, it's it's more of just grabbing a, a coffee and sitting there and using their Wi-Fi which you can do and do some work there. It's a very easy place to go. It's an easy meeting place. Everybody knows where the McDonald's is. So if you need a few people to meet somewhere, you can say, meet me in the McDonald's and everybody knows instantly where to go. And then you can figure it out from there. Teams are coming in little league teams. Kids always love going to McDonald's, uh, birthday parties there. Uh, just whatever it's McDonald's is kind of like this big meeting place that, that kind of serves the community. So, Head on over to your local McDonald's and refuel and connect. Uh, Jake, one of these days we can get together for a uh, a little in McDonald's. Maybe the local McDonald's will let us do a show in there. If they want to pay me in fries and McNuggets, I'm good. I'll do I'm it. totally cool with it. You know what that would make me say? I'm loving it. Thank you, as always, for making Locked On NBA your first listen every day. Why don't you make the second listen every day? One of our other team podcasts, there's a lockdown for every team, so if you're wondering about the milwaukee bucks or the detroit pistons the things that we talk about a little bit here but you want to go more in depth locked on pistons locked on bucks we're about to talk about the utah jazz and the sacramento kings locked on kings locked on jazz all of our teams locked on celtics jake's a locked on pelicans very in-depth local experts going to have you covered so we'll we'll start the conversation here go to all the local podcasts to get the in-depth stuff Utah Jazz, 119-113, winners over the Sacramento Kings. They fought hard for this one. This was the fourth game in six nights for the Utah Jazz, so they started off slow. They needed epic games from Donovan Mitchell and Mike Conley, who combined for 66 points. Donovan had 36. Conley had 30. Daggers late in the game. Sacramento almost pulled this off, uh, if not for a, a tough night. For Fox, they 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 might have pulled this off. Yeah, he he didn't score in the first half of this game. He finished with just 13 points on the night, four 15 shooting overall. But look, they got contributions everywhere, and that's what I thought was kind of most impressive from them. Harrison Barnes, 23 points. He's been like quietly very good for them this year. Buddy Heald's coming in off the bench. I know they've talked about trading him, but when you go five of seven from deep, that's a real good bench option to have in route to 19 points from him. Devian Mitchell off the bench, 18 points as well. Just kind of contributions off the board kept him in this game. And look, normally when you have De'Aaron Fox have a game like that, this one is like, what, over by the middle of the third quarter and wasn't the case for, this, uh, for the Kings tonight yeah look they they fought and look the kings there's something to cheer for in sacramento this year oh, yeah. that that's that's clear and that that's exciting and you know for for kings fans to to look at this and say oh okay i, I get this that that that's important now the question is do they continue to hold on to healed or harrison barnes this could simply be a case of Barnes and Heald playing their way into a position to be traded. And, hey, you know what for the Kings? Might not be the worst thing in the world because if those guys are playing well, then maybe um, a Philly says, okay, you know what? We we find these trade pieces acceptable in a Ben Simmons trade. I don't know. If, I, I'm just throwing it out there. I don't even know if Sac Sacramento would want Ben Simmons at this point. But point is, if you've got these pieces and you, you feel this excitement, and you know they're playing their way into higher value maybe you cash in on them or maybe you know what maybe the kings just say it's more important for us to make a playoff push and hey playing the way they played tonight that that playoff push doesn't seem unrealistic you get a, a little bit per performance a better performance from De'Aaron fox you, you shore up the defense a little bit davion mitchell looks like the real deal uh you needed like they needed real Tough play down the stretch in Utah. Rudy Gobert with 20 rebounds. Uh, Just controlled the boards like all, yeah. all game in this. No no answer for, for that. In, in the regular season, there's not going to be an answer for that. Like if he's playing like that, you, you got you, – you have to be on point. And, you know, when they shot 45%, Sacramento did, 
it, you got to shoot 50 percent when when Gobert is, is protecting the paint like that and, and grabbing rebounds, and that that's hard to do. So, but playing like this, playing the way Sacramento did in this game, they're going to win plenty of games playing like. Yeah, look, they're they're in contention for the playing tournament. They will be all year long. You know, that's that's a big step forward for the Kings, I think. All right, let's get to the late late game, the LA Lakers and Houston Rockets. 119-117 Lakers win, which was, I mean, look, the Lakers had already lost to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Losses to the Thunder and the Rockets uh within the first couple of weeks of the season would have just been Armageddon in LA. They avoid it. Okay, let's just get to like the numbers are what they are, right? The 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 story of the game is the the Rockets, you know, plucky Rockets, whatever. They they got a little too sloppy at the end. LeBron in the fourth quarter went berserk. He ends up with thirty points, uh, ten assists, four rebounds, uh, crushed it in the fourth quarter, saved saved the, the Lakers. But I think the big story here is how the officials handled the blown uh, free throws. So let me explain this. Ken Bazemore was fouled. They they said it was the fifth Rockets foul, and they gave him two free throws. It turns out it was the fourth Rockets foul. They didn't realize that until a couple of plays later. They review it. They take the, the points off the board. But Jake, when you make two free throws, the other team takes the ball out of bounds and gets the ball when you foul a guy and you're supposed to get side out that's supposed to be the lakers possession the officials got extraordinarily lucky that the last shot of the houston had the last shot of the game and it had a chance to go in it was a three-pointer if that had gone in the lakers would have had a real legitimate gripe and protest for this game yeah, this, this is one of those situations where we could have actually seen a game outcome change under protest and not just in like a Daryl Morey want to scream about something kind of way. <laughs> this this basically took away a possession essentially for the Los Angeles Lakers and whatever they could have done with that. And look, this game re- came down to the final shot. You had Jalen Green with a Damian Lillard-esque three-pointer to really oh, bring them within two. The, the Rockets inbounded the ball, got fouled, they got it back in again, and they missed the three-pointer that would have won them the game. But if, and if, they, if they had won by one point, the Lakers, who basically lost a possession, just deleted essentially from this game, would have had an absolute, entirely valid case, in my opinion, to protest this game and say they should have won or that you've got to kind of replay it from a certain point. And we would have led the show off with that because oh, it absolutely. would have been a nearly unprecedented situation. The refs are so lucky that that didn't happen because that's probably not the way the league wants to kind of be in the headlines for. Yeah, man, it was like a close call. Like, I don't, I don't know how that happens. I don't know how, what the protocols would be to kind of rewind the game because at that point you just let it go on too long. I don't know. Is it the Lakers official scorer who missed that sort of thing? Like there's some questions and the league probably needs to have something in place if this ever comes up again, because this would have led the rest of the week. And it's like the marquee team in the league, right? right? It's the Lakers. The Lakers who are, it's one thing if it's like, okay, see whatever, they're going to be terrible anyway. The Lakers, oh man, like this would have been disastrous. Like I don't even think that's hyperbole to say. No, that's not hyperbole at all. You know what? It's kind of weird because uh, I was at the what was the the Celtics uh, the last home game. Uh, I'm losing track, but they there was a scoring mistake that for that lasted for like half of a quarter. That two extra points were on the board. And everybody was just thinking, like, oh, the Celtics are up. And they ended up being down two. And, look, when you're playing and you see we're up, you, you that affects you mentally. To, to think that a score is a certain score and time is winding down, you're looking. That affects, hey, I, I need to put up a three or maybe I need to push this a little bit. This, this really is and, – and we haven't as of yet – seen a pool report or any quotes uh out of la here about this oh oh wait actually there is some but um yeah they're they're kind of blowing it off 
in LA because they won the game for now, at least LeBron and, and Anthony Davis. But um, they, if they had called it the right way, there would have been 231 on the clock and the Lakers would have had the ball. Um, and it wasn't until later on that they realized this. They should have just said, hey, you know what? We're going to go back. We're going to give you guys like a, a timeout. The, they call the commissioner on the phone at the, on the sidelines. And be like, all right, look, let's just give you a timeout. You get three minutes. Everybody cool off. We're going to go back. We're going to look who was on the floor. We're going to put the clock back at 231, and it's going to be Lakers ball out of bounds. That would have been the most fair thing to do. To suddenly take two points off the board and and cost the Lakers a possession they had earned with a foul, that is that is egregious. And, and frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if it leads to fines or even suspensions for the officiating group. Yeah, look, and, and it overshadows a, like a, a pretty fun game, right? Jalen Green going for 24 yes. points, 5 of 10, and that Damian Lillard, right, deep three on a step back, that kind of little jump step back move, and then rainbows that thing in. If you haven't seen it, you've got to check it out. That thing should have hit like the scoreboard on the ceiling, basically, which was awesome. You had Anthony Davis playing center, right, leading to a big game for him, Westbrook and LeBron James. Westbrook was 27 points, 7 assists, 9 rebounds. Davis, 27 points, 9 boards. LeBron James, as you mentioned, and took over in the fourth like this is one of those games that you should look at and be like future of the league with the Rockets right there and Jalen Green kind of the yep. old guard here with the Lakers really stepping up and it's like an awesome late night league pass game and instead we're talking about officiating mistakes that's not what you want it's not what you want uh let me just read you in the Frank Vogel quote and then we'll wrap it up he says, that's, that's definitely something the league has to look at. I understand the mindset to get it right, but it was their fourth foul and they gave us free throws. You're only supposed to get free throws on the fifth foul, so we shoot the free throws and play resumes. A couple possessions later, they made a mistake, so they just take the points off the board. Okay, which is, to me, like once play resumes, you can't correct that. The league's got to look at that because they can't give us that possession back. It was corrected at the time of the call. We get the ball on the side, and it's our ball. Once that goes away, you just take the points away, and you don't give us the possession back. You can't correct that at any point, so I'm very frustrated by that. The league has to look at that, which I'm sure the league will. This is going to be a story that continues as we move forward, but Locked On Lakers for sure uh, will have much, much, much more on that. We're going to come back with our real or fake, and is the league's scoring dip real or fake? We're going to talk about that after we talk about Built Bar, hey, Thanksgiving is around the corner, and we're all going to eat our Thanksgiving meals, and, and you know maybe you want to try a little bit uh, of being healthy. How about a Built Bar for dessert? Instead of a slice of pie that contains upwards of 300 calories, you can get a Built Bar for about 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar and plenty of protein. Forget the coconut cream pie, get a coconut Built Bar. Forget the raspberry pie, get a raspberry built bar. Low calorie, low carb, low fat, high protein, covered in 100% real chocolate. It's a great option for when you're hungry. If Thanksgiving isn't coming soon enough, go for a built bar or two. You can share it with your friends. And there are new surprises every month with limited flavors arriving at built.com regularly. So check the site often. And there's nothing like a built bar Black Friday. Mark your calendar. Black Friday will be a huge event with all sorts of surprises. So go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15. You're going to get 15% off every time you use it. So don't be afraid to go back often. Promo code LOCKED15 is available for 15% off at built.com. Ben Online is back and better than ever with a new web interface for the start of basketball season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Ben Online remains your number one spot for all of the basketball, football action this season. You can head on over to the new updated desktop or mobile website, sign up today. Use the promo code Locked On for a 50% welcome bonus. So basketball, baseball, nope, no baseball. World Series is over. Congrats, Atlanta Braves. So bet on football or in the NHL uh, or your favorite Vegas casino games. Everything that's available at Bet Online. It's the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. Please gamble responsibly. Once again, I want to thank you for making Locked On NBA 
your first listen every day, why don't you make your second listen, Locked On Fantasy Basketball with Josh Lloyd. He will help you win your fantasy league Monday through Friday, fantasy updates with Josh. He's got you covered. If he doesn't help you win your league, no one will. You probably drafted horribly. Shame on you. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, go, go listen to Fantasy Basketball, wherever we get your podcasts, and on YouTube. All right. We're starting a new thing here. Every, every, every one of these shows has a thing that they do every week. Now we got a thing that we do every week, Jake. It's called Real or Fake. We're going to go to The Athletic and John Hollinger, who wrote on The Athletic, league-wide scoring and efficiency are both way down from where they were a year ago. The median team is averaging 105.3 points per 100 possessions, compared to 108 at this time last season. Field goal shooting, down nearly a full point. Uh, 18 of the league's 30 teams are shooting 34% or less from three. The league as a whole is at 34%. Uh, You're better off giving up a three right now than you're giving up a two, which is wild. Free throw attempts are down by nearly 10%, uh, and players are making fewer of them. So, Jake, is this real or fake? You know, I think it's real for now. I don't know if it's going to be real the whole season long. Part of it is it's early in the year. We're about 10 of the way through the season, you know, give or take. The numbers can kind of fluctuate a bit wildly from night to night on this. And you're seeing some guys who are them struggling. And it's not because of the new rules out there like James Harden is straining some of these others. He's just missing shots, right, that are going to go in, and he's generating good looks, I think. So when I look at that, I think the scoring numbers are ultimately going to try and level out. We're also coming off of two seasons that have been impacted by COVID, shortened, kind of different off seasons, guys not in their normal routines. It's tough to say what kind of impact that has on the league. And when we finally hit next year after like a normal NBA offseason schedule that's not condensed, not different times, guys might have more time off. I think we'll see things get back to normal. Is there a slight dip? Like, yeah, because of the different foul rules. But once James Harden figures that out, you know, it might take him a little bit to relearn how to play basketball in the NBA here. But he's too talented of a player. These guys are too talented to not go out and put up tons of points you know you're missing a guy like zion who shoots 70 percent kind of factoring into these numbers too like all that's going to add up i think eventually to the offense kind of coming back to normal but look if it does stay down i'm not complaining it's been really fun to watch everything so far and look i I do think fatigue plays a factor that's the one area i could really see this mattering right when you're not calling some of those those non- shooting motion fouls you don't get as much rest out there guys are clearly a little bit more tired out there on the court but i think they're going to adjust and i think we'll see scoring come back so it's real right now but it's probably fake long term i'm gonna say it's real and real long term like not maybe not to the to this level but i think scoring and all of this stuff is going to stay down uh the the rest element is i think a real thing here we have we still have a short turnaround from the, the prior season. Um, so, so that is still a factor. And the good teams from last season played deeper into the playoffs. And that short turnaround plus the, uh, the, the, the lack of free throws, sapping your energy, I think the shooting percentages are going to dip. And I think they are going to dip as the game progresses. You're not going to see, you know, big, big fourth quarters uh, quite like we used to. Um, And I think let's fold in the news that the competition committee is recommending changes to the take foul that, that which I've been screaming for forever. I'm not the plenty of people been screaming for forever. Change the rule. When the team is on a fast break, you can't just foul to stop the fast break. Hopefully they make that like the European It's an intentional foul. It's two shots on the ball, so teams have to still go contend with fast breaks. That's going to even add more fatigue. And so if teams are – and teams are trying to play at at, at a faster pace, officials are letting more happen, which means also that there's contact that isn't being called, which takes a toll on Oh, yeah, and you can see it. You know? Like you see that um, on a nightly basis right now. When and and if officials are allowing more contact, that means like there's a reason why boxers are some of the best conditioned athletes in the world. 
when you have to take a beating and then run, like you, that's hard. I think all of that is a correction. I think the scoring bumps that we saw in the past were aberrations. This is a course correction, and we're getting back to what normal basketball should actually be. You allow them to be physical. You can't live at the line and take 17 or 18 free throws. That's ridiculous. And I think they're they're actually starting to fix what has been broken about the league. And if if you're not hitting threes at the rate that you used to, that means more attacking the basket, more two-pointers, and all of the three-point happy stuff that we've been seeing that people have been complaining about, there's a little bit of a correction there too. No, that's a good point. You know, I, again, I think the fatigue is going to be really the, the biggest thing with it. I do wonder, though, if the take foul rule kind of comes in and they eliminate that. Does that send up the offensive efficiency, though, meaning there's going to be more transition opportunities, which are some of the highest efficiency yep, uh, types point. of possessions in the league, right? Like, shouldn't that potentially even it out? That's why I don't think it's it's real. Like, it's definitely real right now. Like, the numbers prove it, right? But I don't think it's going to stay that way, you know, for a long time. But it might stay that way this season, but I don't think this is going to be the norm going forward. It will be interesting to see how how everybody adjusts moving forward. Um, in, in having the full off season and understanding the rules and guys kind of getting their, their, their bearings, so to speak, uh, you know, the Trey Youngs and the, the, uh, James Harden's of, of the world. Uh, they, they, I think everybody is going to adjust and things will level out a little bit, but I do think that everything's going to stay down. We'll see. Um, but by and large, I think everybody's been enjoying the basketball. I yes. think this is like the happy medium, right? Where the, the, the grizzled purists are like, all right, good. Let, let's nothing wrong with taking a forearm and just having to get up and dust yourself <laughs> off. Right. Uh, that's, that's kind of me. I come from the, I come from the hard foul era. So <laughs> No, look, it, it's been fun. Games aren't, you know, they're about the same length of time, but it just feels like they're playing more and it's not f- coming down to free throws and just unnatural stuff. Cool. Let the basketball shine through, which is what we're kind of seeing. That's right. All right. That's going to do it for this show. So thank you for shining through 34 minutes of Locked On NBA. Really appreciate you uh, doing so. Uh, on Wednesdays, I'm John Corrales, host of the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Find me on Twitter at Reds Army underscore John. And I'm Jake Madison, host of the Lockdown Pelicans podcast. You can find me on Twitter at Nola Jake. Make sure you're subscribed to the show wherever you get your podcast free daily, available everywhere. It's on YouTube. And uh, tomorrow will be uh, Jackson Gatlin, Matt Moore. They'll carry you through and rotating hosts all week. So subscribe, watch on YouTube, share the podcast, tell everybody that they should be watching the Locked On NBA podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network.